Wrecking trains is serious business. This is possibly the first time that men with explosives have had the opportunity to actually practice sabotaging railroad cars and a locomotive. Because no one wants to carry 100 pounds of explosives on his back, we need to know how little is needed. While she's still in one piece, let's introduce the opponent. The 280 locomotive tips the scales at 53 tons, tender at 49. First two gondolas, gravel-loaded and groaning under a gross weight of 65 tons each. Third gondola, filled with ties, hugging the track with a 40-ton burden. The remaining cars, empty, weigh in at 25. Okay, let's back up here. Have you any ideas on how to wreck a train? Sounds easy, doesn't it? It would be easier on a curve, but we're going to wreck this one with only two 8-ounce charges of plastic explosive on a straightaway. Placed six inches apart, they will blow a 12-inch gap in an 85-pound rail. That's strange. Nothing happened. Hardly got a bump out of it. Let's take a telephoto look in slow motion. We would call this 12-inch gap a railroad chuck hole. but not a trap for wrecking trains. Evidently, we didn't place the charges far enough apart. This time, we'll blow out two 8-inch gaps and leave a sleeper in between 20 inches long. When 350 tons of rolling freight crashes into this, look out. The locomotive has no steam. She gets a good shove by a pusher engine and coasts down the straight section of the track towards the gap, where she'll... Something's gone wrong again. The tie under the 20-inch section gives a little, but it won't let go of the rail. The empty cars wobbled, but did not derail. So we'll knock out that 20-inch sleeper. With a 36-inch gap, she'll go caboose over engine. The engine's pilot wheels are only 30 inches in diameter. When they drop off the track, the driving wheels should drop off also. Well, what they should do, they didn't. Only the pilot wheels derailed. The driving wheels rode the gap like a jeep jumps a rut. The first two ties were broken, but that only made the empties bounce a little more. The 36-inch gap should have done the trick, but what we really need is a gap in both rails. So, we'll take a 30-inch section from each track. The two gaps are exactly opposite, and there won't be the tendency of one wheel keeping the other headed back for the rail. Keep your eye on the gaps. That's where she'll wreck. Another dud. Wait a minute. No use going on with this run. Not one single wheel derailed, not even the pilot wheels. Those gaps being exactly opposite each other made the setup too evenly balanced. This time they're staggered with the centers offset 15 inches. Now the wheels will get a twist and decidedly bear off to one side or the other. The gaps can't be seen from here, but it's at the same point. The pilot wheels flipped off again, but that doesn't wreck trains. Five runs over an assorted pattern of broken tracks. By theory, any one of them should have wrecked her. But there's one fact that we positively know. No train can float over a 58-inch gap. The pilot wheels are 30 inches in diameter, and the driving wheels are 50. Trains run on tracks, not ties. That's simple deduction, with a kind of logic that makes for good train wrecking. This time, we'll give our stubborn customer an extra wide berth. She'll hit that open space at 26 miles an hour, and when she does, 
nothing happens to the engine. Tender, first, second, third, fourth. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Let's take a closer look at that. Running light, the wheels bounced right off the track, but those are the empties. The loaded cars are still on the track. These cars really hang together. That makes six runs, six upsets, and six theories disproved. We'll try it once more, with 60 inches of rail out of one track and 30 out of the other. The centers of the gaps will be offset by 30 inches. That's a lot of track to blow out, but obviously it can't be wrecked unless. Okay, engineer, give her a hard push. Here she comes, and there go the cars. The tender's front trucks straddled the rail, drifted off the ties, and wrecked the other cars. But the old iron horse just wouldn't bite the dust. We now have a better understanding of why efforts in subversive warfare sometimes fail. By these tests, we have proved that wrecking engines is not easy. To minimize the uncertainties of success in the field, the Office of Strategic Services intends to continue experimental operation.